Welcome, welcome to a rare evening session. My wife's out of town and a hard time getting down here after I put the girls down. There's the usual chaos that is a three year old and a one and a half year old. And uh, yeah, it's just hard to get going. I finally was like, you're just going to sit in bed on Reddit or YouTube. You might as well go make your own content. So came down and had a little cold Moscato that was in the fridge and uh, sat down, started listening to the song a little bit. And then like 20 minutes went by and I was like, I should be recording this. So now we're here. Welcome. Um, I did a few things just now. Uh, the snare, I added some reverb to, and in the chorus, the snare was actually coming in late on all of the hits, like, you know, mil we're talking milliseconds here, but, um, you know, coming in late and it was, it was like adding like, a I don't know if you would consider this to be like a swing, but it was adding this slow feel to what is supposed to be like a, you know, a pretty hard hitting chorus. So I bumped those up. You know, just nudged them over a little bit. Actually, a couple of them start just before, uh, you know, the the new bar line on the grid there. And uh, I feel like it gives it a little more energy for sure. It's crazy how uh, the smallest things like that um, can make such a big difference to the feel of the music. So, um, yeah, something to, to think about in your future competitions. Um, also the bass that we recorded on the last session sounds sick to me tonight. I don't know if it's just my ears tonight or, or what's going on. Um, well, I actually do know one thing was going on. So I duplicated all these record tracks, um, just to kind of, I was cleaning up like the interface, uh, when I ended last time. Just organizing some colors and putting a blank record spot on each. Well, I guess a, a couple of them I duplicated the whole track, which included the core, the bass that we recorded with the new Corey Wong amp. Um, and so it was like super present in the mix, but my gosh, it sounded good. Um, I'm sure for some reason these headphones, these are the... DT 990 Pros, Bayer Dynamics. Um, these have always, whenever I mix on these, uh, things come out super bassy. So I don't know, you know, it's just a little, uh, I guess it would be, the bass would be low in the headphones then because I'm over boosting it to hear it, perhaps. I think that's right. Um, but it sounds great. So um, let's have a little listen here and uh, then we'll figure out what we're going to work on. I feel like I changed one other thing too. Um, if I think of it, I'll tell you after. Let's have a listen.
anyways, it just repeats the chorus right now. You get the gist. Um, yeah, you could see those uh, those snare hits were off. Um, here's another one here. This one is late, and then this one is early. Which if I back it up, now that one's way off. I did like do a time stretch on one of them, but again, whenever I can not time stretch things, I'd rather just just cut out some silence. It seems like the safer bet. Um, I have the Tom site uh, muted right now. That was the other thing I was going to tell you. Um, I was trying to get the Toms in tune because I was thinking about recording the other day. I was hoping to include the girls, but they've been tough to rally, man. I won't even, I'll try not to get onto that. Um, so I was hoping to record some Toms and hoping to kind of get uh, EJ to, to come in and just give me some new hits so we could we could hear the new heads and and uh wanted to try out a different microphone arrangement actually so i was reading about the best microphones for toms and everyone's like you know the the sure microphones and the you know sennheisers or there's a bunch of them so the audix um and a lot of people were mentioning durability because stick hits are common, I guess. Um, and that can damage, I, I heard, I read like that can damage a condenser microphone if you hit it. So the thing I was thinking about is though, we're being very precise in uh, how we're playing the drums right now because we're not actually like performing a whole song. And it it's really hard to like get that crazy on one drum to where you're bashing the microphone. So uh to just get to the point i tried getting some tom recordings with the the p170s the akgs um which are we've been using for the overheads and stuff so um i'm not sure how i feel about them yet but i'll play them for you real quick um you know i, I probably have to do some new gating and stuff but um this is the, this should be the 13. Let me turn off, uh, oh, pitch wheels off. Okay, so it's pretty. So I got to work on the gate on that, but let's hear the other version. This is what we recorded last time. So the tuning's way different. So that's kind of crazy. I feel like I hear a little more attack in the new one. So. Um, they both sound terrible to me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's not great. Um, but again, we we really haven't. These were very temporary. The ones that are in there, um, we we've got some work to do on the toms for sure. I'm I'm really. I, it's really funny. I'll read like things like oh you know the toms whatever. Um, some people are of that opinion. To me, I'm like super picky about the sound of toms, man, because they can sound so awesome. I heard some toms on a song today. Um, I can't remember what it was, but it's like it just as soon as I heard them go do a little doo -doo 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 in the background, I was like, those were good sounding toms. They were electric toms too, I believe. Um, you know, from like a, a digital kit. So um, let's hear this one. I think this one sounds a little better. See, I don't even think I had the mic hot enough. And so that one has a good pop to it. Really good attack there. Um, Got to work on the gate a little and just. There's a little bit of a whoom in there that I wonder if that can be fixed with uh, some some additional tuning. I just got this little 899 drum tuning app on my iPhone. I have barely used it. Um, 
every time I come to sit down on the drum set lately during the day, uh, my daughter's been like, Dad, I've stopped playing, and she takes the sticks from me. Um, she's going through a, a control phase right now, so um, it's been a battle. So um, I actually like that one, though. You know, and, and I didn't even pay too too close of attention to how uh, um, how close the microphone was to the drum head, um, the the angle that I had it. So I gotta, you know, those things are those details are critical. Um, they'll they will make uh, big enough differences that it, I truly like. I believe that that's probably the difference between being you know a pro and is like those little little details. So anyways, uh, that was the other thing I did. So we'll just keep the toms muted for now because I don't feel like dealing with those tonight. Um, the snare, we added just a little bit of verb. With that super plate, which is really cool. Kind of like that E plate. Kind of like that E plate actually. It's cleaner somehow. Um, <laughs> so um, I think what I wanted to do, um, rather than meander tonight, because it feels like it could be that kind of a thing, is maybe... Oh, you know, I, maybe I do. I'll, I want to record this bass, um, re-record it, because I, I definitely had not changed the bass strings. And like, it, it could have been 10 years, to be completely honest with you. Um, I was like not for several years there, I was pretty much doing only synth based stuff. Actually, I got okay at like, you know, not like dubstep basses cause you know, I just, mine are, everything I write is a little more musical. Um, I feel like, and that's not to bash anyone. It's just, uh, you know, I, I don't do a lot of just one note where you know, having some variation in like a flanger or a comb filter or all this, you know, this crazy stuff with a lot of resonance and say, that these guys are doing, it kind of doesn't translate as well when there is actually like a melody to the bass. So I really just got good, decent at, you know, fuzzy, sustained bass tones um, with saw waves and stuff and, and a little bit of overdrive and, um, you know, I like to play around with filters and stuff for sure, but I think it's moved to uh, acoustic bass again, or, uh, you know, like a, an actual bass is a, is a good one. So let me remember what I did here. Where's my bass? Okay, I think I can get that. Uh, let's check the tuning on this bad. We're gonna go into this Rewong bass here. Grab this old tuner. Oop. Uh oh, I didn't even turn the mic pre up. What am I on? Two. Ooh, coming in hot. Okay, now 
AI for all the new channel. There it is. It's hard to turn. If you watched my intro video, I mentioned um, other seasons, other hobbies, other interests getting in the way. Well, one of those is uh, deer season. So I busted out my compound bow for the first time tonight. It's been six months. But it's just been sitting downstairs and uh, it's time to get back in shape. I only hunt with a bow and uh, when we move west, coming up here in the next couple months, back to California, I'm gonna be a little bummed to not have hunting. It's been, I uh, started hunting like nine or 10 years ago. It was like 20, 28 or something, 27. Um, it's been a really fun hobby. It's super stressful, but it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice time in the woods. So it was nice to be outside and doing that today. But that's definitely, um, one of the things that has gotten in the way of music, it seems like there's a, I've noticed a trend. Um, it's like a trend there for a few years where I would get into music like in this late spring and it would take me until like early summer to really get rolling on it, you know, and kind of get everything back. And then September would come around and then all I think about is, <laughs> is deer running. So, and then when we get back to California, It'll be surfing again, you know, um, that'll constantly be on the brain, but so so I don't know if I want to pick it or if I want to finger it. Um, part of my brain is telling me to finger pick it so that people don't lame and the other part of me is going well, how are you going to play it better <laughs> you know and who cares um but i do a little bit so, uh, i guess it's a quirk i guess you could call it let's do this I hear those toms. <laughs> I hear those toms and I'm not happy with the signal level there. Hmm. Well, that was... Of the toms. Mute. Mute. And
a little sharp. Flat. <laughs> All right. Well, it's the same thing, so it'd be better to loop it. That looks like probably where it needs to start. All right. Let's get couple more that are kind of looped and then we can put a little comp together and call it good. I always want to keep going. Good enough. Spot on right there. Oh, the first note came in a little early. That's okay. We can fix that. Oh, I should be doing my transients, I suppose, but it's not that long. Get them all real quick. No, oh, this is nitpicky. Just like I'm just not I was thinking about it the other day and I'm just not confident enough in my playing abilities right now to to not do this, to just trust that it's gonna sound good if it's slightly out of time. That's pretty, pretty close though, on this one, because I re I've really only moved one thing so far. I could come back just a tad. And that one's actually... This doesn't even need to be split. Oh. Not too bad, J Dog. Not even worth it. Oh, that's why I was edit editing the parallax base. Duh. Jeez Louise, man. What a goofball. What a goofball. Um, what, what happened was the, I thought these, these take tracks were like grayed out because that's what the take tracks are. And then I was like, okay, I'll scroll up to the actual track, which is in color. I, and I was like, oh, that must be the, that's too funny. All right. Well, yeah, see, that's more what I expected right there is stuff coming in late and all right. This is why. Chickity check myself here. That's on.
you'll love this guy's channel who makes you sit in silence and watch him watch his screen for a couple minutes at a time over the course of an hour i don't know if that's sustainable but we're going for it i'm not giving up that's why i came down tonight fighting that resistance the resistance to pursue my craft Excuses, excuses, excuses sometimes, man. It's fun. This is fun. I should love it. I am really impressed with uh, the progress that we've made on this, though. And uh, for those of you that have been following along up to this point, super appreciative, man. It's really cool to see views from strangers, even if it's only, you know, a dozen, a couple dozen, a few dozen in some instances. Um, it's still really cool. Just makes me like, makes me want to keep doing it. And uh, and yeah, we've been making good progress. The song sounds way better than it ever did before uh, in its original iteration before I lost all the logic uh, I was using Logic Pro, and I think I had a, I think I had a corrupted hard drive or something. If I remember correctly, that was the deal. It's pretty perfect there. So we are edited up to it's, it's pretty darn close, but I guess it can't hurt to make it other than it it might hurt you guys wanting to hang out if I keep doing nitpicky little tasks like this. Okay, done. There's definitely some stuff off in here. Um, hmm. So the first note is pretty close there, but that looks like a transient there. Doom, do, doom, doom. So if I speed those up a little and then cut that. Okay, that works, huh? Let me know if you have an opinion on the matter. Let me know in the comments. Do you guys like to do your fader on the bus or on the track to keep it louder or both? Did you notice that though? Um, <clears throat> watch this. So 
With it on, with the fader down on the track, we're down 16 decibels. Um, it's not hitting the compressor on the bus now, and it's losing that oomph. So maybe that's a, a point in the in the column of, you know, bring your mix bus down and leave your track as at at its level, you know, um, at unity gain. So is that what it is? I think I feel like. It's been a long time since I've paid attention to any of those like super detailed things like that. But I do, you know, I, I'm trying to treat this like a job now. I got to show up and uh, I'm trying to increase my knowledge and, and uh, you know, I, I would love to be a pro at this. So you've got to think about those things. And I don't know why if I dig through like the deep 15 year old memory bank of my time at Musicians Institute. I feel like on one fader, there was zero and then on another fader there was unity gain and they were kind of like different almost like uh <laughs> like uh celsius and fahrenheit or something um well, i don't know for sure but either way i'm talking boom at zero lined up you know and then now if you listen it'll hit this compressor and it seems to get some more oomph But then again, it's just louder. So, yeah, because then it's just louder. Oh, but here's, here's how we'll know. It's still hitting that compressor that hard. So yeah, it is making a difference. Whew, I got a little scared that I was just on a rant with just BS, you know? <laughs> Uh, definitely I'm not trying to do that to you guys, but I should probably accept the fact that it's going to happen. People are wrong. I am wrong. I will get things wrong. So will you. All right. Enough loop. I'm getting in. This. And enough click. Bass is so low now, you know? Oh, there you go. Put this one up. about to say oh uh for the for the chorus um I remember we talked about da, 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 da. so now i've shifted my thinking and as soon as i can have some time to play on the drums um i was thinking it would be cool if it was actually more of like a like a roll sort of a thing <laughs> you know like where the hands are it's crash snare crash it's kind of that thing um, envision, I can see it in my brain. I can see my buddy Mike playing. Um, so that could be a little more energy and a little less. It just sounds like cheesy right now. I um, mean, we knew that that wasn't actually recorded. Those are just some snares copied and the volumes dropped. So, um, 
but it you know it, i still don't think if i was to play it just like that if it's going to be the desired effect may, maybe not i guess we'd have to try it but um and then the other thing i was going to tell you is don't know why i haven't added this yet because i've always loved it so much so going into this bridge you'll notice the bass comes in on the third beat i think it's the third beat anyways there's a delay listen now it comes in so I, there's a little fill that i used to have in um and i'll definitely add it back because i like the way it sounds but what was it doom, doom. so it's two kicks doom, doom. tom doom, 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 doom. on the snare doom, doom. Doom, 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 doom. something like that like a little and then the and then there's like a crash um when the uh bass comes in and it just is you know it's a cool like delayed downbeat um so that'll be cool to add back in How, let me i gotta hear that now yeah that's it Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll add that back in and, um, oh, I remember there was another thing I was going to tell you. So this is crazy. Um, and drummers may know this, but I was getting the toms tuned and I kept having problems. I've, you know, I've been like kind of avoiding the toms for microphone reasons and tuning reasons, um, and also time reasons, uh, and toddler reasons. Uh, that was, that was the four T's, wasn't it? Um. So I was having problems with the rack tom and I've got those new heads on and when I would hold it and hit it, just hold it in the air as if it was a floor tom, it sounded great. And then I put it on the rack, which consists of about a half inch piece of pipe that comes out of the kick drum and, uh, and goes into the side of the tom. And what I'm, what I've gathered from a, short bit of reading and then also just some you know it seems like fairly simple logic to grasp that the air pressure changes or something you know when you plug that hole on the outside because right now there's a hole inside the drum when you plug that with a tube there's no more that, that sound is not coming out of that hole and instead it's vibrating down into the kick drum and so it gives it this muted effect um, so that's really annoying. So, um, and then I noticed the, you know, this is a pretty cheap little drum kit, you know, so, uh, some of the stands and the hardware is not that great. And I noticed, uh, that bracket on that Tom mount is already kind of breaking. So I'm looking into, uh, getting like, a. they've got like these floating universal mounts, in Gibraltar, Gibraltar, is that a, a GIF or a GIF, G. Um, so I'm looking to get one of that so that we can have it suspended. But for now, since I'm not playing it, I just threw it on when I recorded these takes. Uh, I just threw it on the snare stand. Um, and it, it sounded great still. So uh, just something that was, you know, that I never would have thought. And uh, now I know. So um, I guess we've got to do a little more bass here. Then we can probably call it a night. Just waiting to, to hear from my wife too. She should be landing in. This hurricanes in California stuff is crazy. Like, you know, like I've done a lot of uh, hurricane surfing the past seven, like 10 years. Uh, I've just been obsessed. Now the past three, it's been minimal because, because the girls and, you know, now we live in Western New York. So it's like, I'm like almost seven hours from the beach. So I don't go very often. Um, but the last time I did go surf New Jersey, sick hurricane swell, double overhead. Awesome. Um, so yeah, but this hurricane in California is, is, uh, potentially in California. It's 
pretty crazy. I don't remember ever hearing about that when I was a kid and I was there for, you know, 25 years. And I love weather. I love geology, earthquakes, volcanoes. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm usually all into all that stuff. But that's what my wife just texted me back. That. That's what brought that up. I was like, dude, what are you doing? You're just rambling now. You're rambling to nobody. I'm rambling to you. So she should be home in a couple hours. Hopefully she can find an Uber at one in the morning. Because I don't want to wake these girls up. That'd be horrible. Um, base, base, base. So what's this part? get it um i was as i was listening to that i started to think about you know do we really need to double this base is that necessary it's not that hard but is it necessary and then i started to think what if this base was muted what would the song sound like <laughs> exactly the friggin' same oh my god no, I'm sure I'm sure if we listen close, we would hear some parts where that bass comes out uh, and we're not hearing that fuzz anymore. So we could kind of do just like we do with the guitars. We kind of do a, a little battle of the basses, a clean bass and a, uh, the distorted bass there. That's like a doable thing. So you have the clean bass in the beginning. Build up. It's clean bass. Or, I mean, uh, distorted bass. The parallax. Chorus. Back and forth. Bridge. Clean. Bridge two. Distorted chorus back and forth back and forth i like patterns and there's that's a pattern that i like so we might try it i think i also just don't feel like recording that because i'm pretty <laughs> pretty happy with it like it sounds fine it's gritty that's what i wanted i mean i could turn knobs just for the hell of it but just see what the, the new strings sound like let's not be lazy here man come on man i am get i'm getting a little tired it's been a long day 
these kids will wear you out, man. I just love them so much. We just like, you'll have like a great hour. They're just adorable. And then the stupidest thing will just blow. They'll just blow up, you know, and you know, they wrestle. It's like babies wrestling that have no, no concept of danger and pain. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's crazy. So yeah, the bedtime thing is, it's always a battle and we've taken the courses and stuff. Um, you know, like brushed up on all the modern parenting techniques. And I said to my wife last night, I was like, what did we do wrong? Like what, what is happening? Where's our sweet baby? All right. Base. Um. Yeah, love those base slides. All right, let's try this. I did just go with, I'm just picking. I'm just not precise enough for, I mean, I guess I could, I could do, I don't know. I don't know. I want to be, I want to be authentic and true to that instrument. Just would love for someone to tell me, I guess I'll look it up and I'll tell you guys next time what I find. Would love for someone to tell me what the advantages of not playing with a pick. Is it just because it seems cooler to pick with your fingers? I don't know. Maybe that's not the tone that they're going. Maybe they don't want this scratching on the strings. Um, I mean, bass looks looks dope though. Loop that. Dude, I don't want to be solo. Give myself a little bit after too. I'm not even recording able. There we go. All right. Yeah, I like that. Like that's kind of like a tight little doom 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 doom. Like a little uh a little on the dancier side, I guess. I think we're coming in a little hot right there though. Let's delete those. Those were garbage. Garbage takes. Now I'm doing finger. Keep playing that part. Right? So the only thing I don't like about this take system is like, where are all these going? <laughs> it's like it seems like a lot of data and storage.
That was a cool one. He's coming up with different patterns. Last one. Actually, like now that I got into that and was really like feeling the strings, it's great to play with your fingers. You can like, really like time it, you know. So maybe that's the difference. Man, we're learning a lot tonight. This has been great. Uh oh, just a... I don't think that's I don't think that's exactly the right pattern, but we're going to find it. We're probably going to have to edit it together, but we're going to find exactly the right groove for that second bass part that like complements the kick drum and really drives that part into like dance mode. Just love the way it's like flips a switch. <laughs> So now we got to decide if we want to go, if we want to go back and, and get away from that, that, that vibe, um, by doubling that, like, or, um, like looping that whole segment, or do you want the third, I guess it would be bars eight through 12. Do you want bars eight through 12 to match? bars one through four or the bars right before and right after that's a decision to make it's probably a decision for another day but it's something to be thinking about up until that day comes because it's critical i think right now i left the hi-hats in you'll hear i left the hi-hats in so they stay drivey after this part is when the hi-hats really pick up into, into a rhythm. Um, and then I keep that rhythm going and it's doubled over the top of the first four bars. Um, so like this part I should probably take out though, because this is like, some of this is impossible. And I, it's one of the things I don't like. I don't like things to be impossible. Um, it would be impossible for two hi-hats to be playing at the same time unless we have two drummers. And we're not, this isn't one of the things uh, where there's two drummers playing. So you really don't need, you really don't need that one. Um, and some of these hits are, you know, um, I don't know. We got, that's something to think about. I, I have to decide where I want to land. Generally, I'd like, I like to be, real but at the same time like what's best for the song and what you know if the song sounds good with the hi-hats like that maybe we should keep it that way and then i gotta think of a way to And then I gotta think of a way, like, I like that doom boom. Like, that goes into that part. But when you come out of it, 
So maybe it just, I feel like it needs something to kind of bring you back to that first, uh, that first pattern, we'll call it. Um, Cause right now it just, it basically just octaves up, you know? Um, and I guess that works because that's what we did anyways. We've just been really playing between the two octaves of whatever that is. G sharp. Yeah. G sharp. I think, um, yeah, cause it's the fourth fret. So yeah. And fifth fret would be a, um, yeah. So I don't know. We'll think about that, but it sounds pretty cool. Um, let's just give one last listen through the end of the bridge and we can call it good for tonight. That'll put us right in an hour. And then if I can muster getting up first thing in the morning, we'll do some more. Sound good? Appreciate you guys hanging out and, uh, like, and subscribe, uh, the video, the channel, all that stuff. Um, consider becoming a Patreon. That would be awesome. Um, but most of all, just keep hanging out, man. It's cool to see you guys checking it out, and I uh, hope you're enjoying it and learning something, or I'm entertaining you in, I guess, whatever way. <laughs> so maybe don't let me know all the ways that I'm entertaining you. Peace out, guys. Enjoy the song. <laughs>